morning. It's a bright, beautiful, and breezy day here in northern Maine. We're getting things kicked off with yet another derby. Probably one of my last Maine Northeastern derbies of the season. But this is on one of my favorite lakes, so I'm especially excited for today's video. This is a typical fall day in the Northeast. It's not too cold, but it's cold enough. Definitely get your nipples hard and the fish chewing. At least, hopefully, fingers crossed. This is a small little club derby we're fishing right now. Uh, maybe like 15, 20 boats, nothing insane. But what I am excited about is getting the opportunity to catch not only some big smallmouth, but potentially some big largemouth. This little lake is strange because it's split in half. One side is super deep, it's got lake trout, it's really clean and clear, and that's of course where the smallmouth dwell. But on the other side, you've got largemouth, which is where we've launched right now. It's, it's like dirty water, it's tannic, there's grass. There's also big largies too, so we have the opportunity to bounce from one to the other. I don't know what it's gonna take to win today. Maybe like, 18 pounds, it finally is a five fish limit. I, I always I always scold at the fact that a lot of these tournaments are seven fish limits. I think it's way too much, but this is finally a five fish limit, which is good on the fish. It just makes for easier live well management. But I'm joining force over here with Connor. He is uh, flown all the way from where? Or sorry, driven, almost, New probably should have flown. Yeah, yeah. should have, New York, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Connor had a football game in New York yesterday. And he's like, I mean, I could try to make it happen. So I don't know. I'm not going to ask you how much sleep you had, but it's probably not a lot. So he drove all the way from New York to Portland, from Portland to here. And uh, my original partner, Ryan, unfortunately couldn't make it. Shout out to Ryan if you're watching this. But I was hoping to fish with Connor before the season ends. So this actually works out. And we get to do it on such an amazing lake, fishing against uh, some awesome anglers. We also got Lucky here too. They don't know it, but she's going to be doing most of the fishing today. <laughs> Yeah, she's the captain of the boat. We're just gonna watch and let her bass. There's the intro. Hope you guys are stoked. Stick with it, stay tuned, and let's go crank them. Crossing door 19. And you guys are number five. Uh, we didn't get a number. Uh, John and Connor. John and Connor? Yeah, seven. Seven. Gotcha, thank you. Jesus. Nice. Well, we are boat number seven. Not a bad number, it's 20, 20 boats out here, way more than I had anticipated. Uh, Lucky barked the whole tournament breathing, briefing, she was voicing her opinion. But I think we're gonna start off kind of shallow, and then as the wind picks up, I don't know, it's probably gonna move the smelter on, so we're gonna jump from shallow to deep. Might go try the largemouth side. Wanna stick to the small side at first, see if we can get some big ones that should be eating right now with it being so cold. I don't know, like I, I'm talking this lake up so much, how much I love it, but it might kick our ass today. You never know. You ready? Are you gonna drive? Where's your life vest? Put your life vest on. You're illegal. Big motor's on, girl. Where are you doing, Scoots? Go get him. Go get him. We made it to the first spot. Had to get some big smallmouth. This lake is known for having big largemouth and of course also big smallmouth. And that's usually what I chase out here. I don't really know how to catch the largemouth, so we figured we'd start off on the clear deep side where most of the SMBs like to chill. Of course, in typical John B fashion, I was too honed in on the tournament and not very focused on the filming aspect of today's video, the whole point. Well, my GoPro is on time-lapse mode, but we did catch the first fish of the day. Nice big bronze back. Probably High threes all day. Good stuff though, that's what we need. Now we're actually recording, sorry about that. But I checked early. That would have been sad if we filmed the whole day in time lapse mode. Uh, let me get into your right foot real quick. First thing in the morning, started throwing the drop shot. There was a little bit too much wind to be throwing top water like I anticipated. Ripped around the jerk bait for a bit. Nothing on that, which is weird. Usually this time of year the jerk bait gets throttled. So we're fishing this edge. Um, this lake is notorious for having deep water adjacent to the bank. So. Uh, you'll have kind of a five foot, six foot, seven foot flat, and all of a sudden it drops down to 16 to 18, and then eventually it goes down to 30 or 45. Start off kind of slow. I, I broke off on one there in the morning, because it's still morning, but like first thing in the morning uh, on the rattling dead on the drop shot. And then we saw a bunch of other ones, they just weren't eating. How deep was that? Like 20 foot? Uh, yeah, I think it's 22. Yeah, right when we got you to. See him, though. Right off. Oh, there's some more bait. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a, that's a fish right there. So let's talk lures. What were we throwing today? This is, like I said, 100 times a lake that I'm familiar with. Um, normally when I come here, they eat jerk baits, they eat poppers, they eat the rattling ned, 
They love the drag and drop, and they also like eating swim baits. So the, the two lures that I had tied on most today, one of which that we start off in the morning, was this little Jimmy right here, a bait that you guys know and love. This one in particular is in the mud minnow color, which is also my favorite. The mud minnow color is quite unique. It's kind of a pearl silver uh, white on the bottom, and on top you've got this beautiful watermelon with some black fleck in it. So we're starting off today with the old tried and true. Connor's throwing a fluke on a drop shot, and I'm throwing the little rattle in that in kind of a lighter color. It, I suppose it looks similar to this smell. It's probably about the same size. In the morning, I wanted to try kind of up shallow. This is not a shallow spot, but it's close to the bank. And with there being a lot of wind right now, it's not gonna be nice going out to the main lake. And you just gotta take advantage of the fact that it's low light and these fish are gonna be moving around chasing bait. The main forage in this lake is definitely little micro craws, smelt. And then I have seen them sort of perch before too. Come on, buddy, you gonna eat this or what? There he is. There's two of them. There you go. Decent one. I'll take it. Just out there schooling in 19 foot. Look, he's in such an ideal spot, isn't he? It's all good. Give her a second, she's still really good. <laughs> that was cool. He had the whole time. I think he ate it on the drop like that last one. Come on, buddy. Oh my god. I know, they don't quit. Got him. Thanks, man. Yeah. Fish number two. A little two pounder, definitely a fish we want to call, but and then we'll take it. Uh, Got to get some meat in the box before we start thinking about the big bigs. And they're here. That's a nice, I mean, if we're gonna get a two pounder, that's a good one to get. In the box you go, I'm gonna put a red call tag is in this one, just a heads up. There we have it, number two. Maybe it just needs to heat up a little bit too, for these fish to be more clean to eat. Like those ones reacted so perfectly. I'm gonna try a little swim bait. There's four fish, they're all baked too. line so conveniently. I'm gonna try a little swim bait. They're right, they're like kind of off to our right too. Imagine there's some others just like randomly. A little swim bait, maybe that'll do it. There we go, swim bait, that was the move. Thanks. It'll keep. Not a giant, but it'll keep. That's something I didn't throw at him the other day was a swim bait, so maybe that's the ticket. Yeah? Nice, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, I think the weight thing's big too. Fish number three on a little tiny two inch swim bait. Probably about a two pounder. Put a call tag in him. Hopefully, we get rid of him by the end of the day. So yellow and red, those are two smallest right now. It's incredible how they can even see a bait down there. I imagine they probably just feel it more than anything. It seems to always be smelt smell on this uh, bank. I don't know why. Even when the wind's blowing out of it. Oh my God, dude. Jesus. I think you just ate it. <laughs> that was cool. Good one. Good one. Oh, nice one, man. That was that disgusting. Was so quick. Why can't they all be like that? You know, why can't they all just act so aggressive? Oh, that's a good fish, man. Very good fish. Holy, bro, that's a giant, that's dude. Nice Put it there. Thank you, man. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get back to it. That was really quick. First spot, oh my God, dude. That's gonna go three all day. Whew, found another one, healthy three pounder. Yes, sir, yes, sir, Lucky. All right, we need one more for a limit. Whew, I guess we stoked. What we had seen in the first couple hours of fishing is we saw lots of smelt. And if you don't know what smelt are, they look like this. They're long, skinny, and stinky. I don't know if they're stinky, but I just, 
I assume they're stinky. We, uh, we were finding big balls of these in like 20 to 18 foot of water in the spot. And every now and then you'd move your graph and you'd see a, a big smallmouth, a couple big smallmouth of that, uh, just kind of on the outer edge. And you have to presume that those fish are probably stalking that smelt around waiting for the right opportunity. So basically we're just trying to find fish that are in that feeding mode because a lot of the ones we were seeing roaming around just did not want anything to do with the, the net on the drop shot. Oh no, big one. Just missed him. I took my bait. Good touch. Such a fun one. <coughs> right there. Oh, they followed me all the way up, but they wouldn't commit. Are you kidding me? Stooges, man. Stooges. Let's see if that's good enough. Oh, what the? Got it. He had it the whole time. Good one. Oh, nice one. That's gonna help. I know, right? Fall fishing in Maine. Oh, dude, that is a chunk. Fucking nice little three pounder. Maybe not. Oh, no, he's kind of small. Yeah, that's a good one. We'll take it. That's number five, though. Yeah. Let's go, buddy. There's another one down there. Oh, he's right below us. See me get this fish. He's right there, like right there. Whew. That's our fifth fish, boys. We're looking good. Now it's time to call. Hit him, please hit him. They were aggressive. Just switched to a little swim bait on the drop shot, and that was enough to get this guy to commit. After we caught that big one, I was buzzing. I was like, okay, maybe these fish are gonna start turning on. Unfortunately, what you'll find later in this video is it gave us a little bit of uh, false hope. It's, it's crazy how some smallmouth won't even let the drop shot hit the, hit the bottom. They will rock it all the way off their zone to grab that thing before it even hits. I don't know, it was weird. I, I'd never seen smallmouth like, like that in this like act this way, but I've also never seen them act so dormant and just unenthused to eat your lure. But what matters is we got that one and that's another nice fish to our bag. What's that? Yeah, there's one right here. Pretty big too. He does not see it yet. Now he sees. He sees the weight. Oh, and it goes the other way. What? You think a, f a little lonesome smelt-looking thing out there would be exactly what that fish was? Oh my God, dude, that thing's big. It's actually a pretty big one. I can see his whole body there for a second. Oh, something a little different. They really weren't loving too hard up on the the mud. You think you catch him up shot probably on a cloudy day with some more wind they'd be up there yeah, but... he's like nose down oh there's your bait oh you got one looking at you right now he went from me to you oh and now he's gone i love it i feel like just a single swim bait head would be better but i don't it just takes forever to get down there by the time you get down there they've already moved they're so quick today do you have any of those spoon oh, i have a spoon maybe try that i don't know you want to try a spoon I got a big, big, like, uh, water spoon, if you don't have it. I don't know, is that a thing? Try it. They, these fish want something right now. I don't, like, the drop shot's doing okay. Maybe not, maybe just stick with what we're doing. We already catching fish. This is one of the reasons why we're catching fish still so deep right now. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but that is all smelt, all bait. And while usually the fall tactic means that you're gonna catch fish shallow, rip and jerk baits and moving baits. Um, oh, that was a terrible cast. Oh my God, dude, get down there. There's three giant fish, three giant fish. Oh my God, they're right behind this bait too. They sh oh, there's four actually. Oh, just in 33 feet of water too. Nothing, nothing too deep. Here we go. Come on, they're all going for it. In the net. <laughs> I'll you. Get back down there. There's three more. That might be our first call of the day. I'm not entirely sure, but we do have two in there that are about two pounds, and this one should go three. I don't know. It's really hard to tell this time of year when some of them aren't fed up yet. Still, they still have that summer summer bod. 
where they're all skinny. It's a pretty skinny fish, but I guarantee his belly's full of smelt. Not bad. 18 inches, 17 inches. Let's see what kind of claws we can make here. Okay, now everything's just getting wet. Oh yeah, look at that. Alright, first fish calling. With the old and with the new. Call on a about a two pounder. Go back down there with your buddies. Alright, get another one in there and get rid of it. We're already calling, it's not even ten, right? Oh, sorry, I was talking about bait and fall fishing, but what I was trying to say earlier was a lot of these uh, a lot of times in the fall, especially up north, you can find them shallow. But when it, I guess it's still super sunny out and the water is still fairly warm. 66 it's still pretty warm for this time of year um it's gonna send those fish or at least not send them but keep them deep imagine what that water hits like high 50s real low 60s be able to get them on a jerk bait or hit it hit this lake on a day when it's um super cloudy and windy but it's kind of calm today and there's just not not a whole lot of overcast which is definitely gonna keep these fish deep chasing bait if the bait's deep then they're gonna be deep period we haven't found smell any shallower than like what did I say like 20 foot 18 foot that's why I'm throwing a little tiny swim bait on a drop shot looks just like the smelt down there there's another one. Oh my gosh this is fun kill it kill it oh that is so frustrating there's a perfect example of what we're chasing down here that is a small rock on the grass. Probably about a three pounder or two. All the big ones seem to be deep right now. Probably could get some shallow, but I think these three pounders are, are definitely gonna be in the deeps, the abyssal zone. Look at all that bait too. Right near where that fish was at. How clutch. And it's not and it's like not like there's really that many. And there's like maybe one out of the group that wants to eat. It's like Yeah, I was gonna say I, like that last one you caught, I dropped down on it. Yeah, no, they didn't want it. That's a fish, I'm pretty sure. Oh my god, look at this, look at this, loose. Coming up for it. He's falling it down. Impressive, man. And he doesn't want it anymore. Wow. He was beaming towards it. Psychopath. Let's see if he feels bad for me. Oh my god, he does. Look at that. How dumb is that? Good one, too. Some of them will come straight off the bottom for it. That, that's gonna call for us, I think. Yeah, dude, definitely. That's a good fish. Oh yeah. That's one of our big ones. Thank you, man. You're killing it with the nut job. Ooh. That's a good one, man. Nice one. Okay. Uh, that should, should call for us. Second call of the day. This is good news. This is good news. There's the other one. Look at that, man. Not bad. Yes, we'll take it. Okay. See you later, Stinky. I should have put call tags in the other ones, but I'm just too lazy. Now I don't, now this is going to be weird. I don't really know what the hell we have. Out with you, buddy. Bye-bye. Oh my God. I'm going to set up the big camera back here. Um, if it gets in your way, just let me know. Two of them down there. I think they're getting a little competitive. God, it's a big one. Nice fish. High threes. All right, here comes the fun part. I got a call now. He choked it. So what's the deal? I don't get it. There's another one down there too. Not too bad. Might help us out a little bit. Low mid threes, but can't complain. It. Yeah. Let's go. That might be our third call today. I gotta take a look what's in the box. It's 
12 p.m. We're feeling pretty damn good. I'm not super worried that we're gonna get last place at this point. We've called a couple times. So I'm thinking, all right, we've got maybe 15 pounds of bass in the well. Let's go look for some largemouth. This is not a lake that I really know how to largemouth fish on, but I do know that there's big ones that live on the shallow side. So we went under the bridge, popped out, started doing some graphing, and immediately found some really good grass. Therefore, picked up the crankbait and tried to get a little bit of a moving bite bait going. That also didn't work. We actually ended up catching a smallmouth on that side. So a little confusing. I don't know what was going on there. Usually this time of year when you get wind and cool weather, it gets those largies charged up in the grass and the vegetation. We go back to the smaller side. The wind continues to rip even some more. It's blowing like 15 now with some 20 mile per hour gusts. And I'm getting a little concerned because I'm running out of places to fish. It's not a big lake, you know? I'm, I've got my confidence zones and I've got places right now that I'm just kind of pulling out of my ass. Not literally pulling stuff up, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. We packed up shop on the east side of the lake and went to the west side where all the wind was blowing. That's where things get a little bit interesting. No way. Holy sh Oh my god. That is not good. I, I see it. There it is right there. <laughs> so normally in this case, I completely lose my sh I'd start breaking other things and probably just go home. But we're in a derby. I'm fishing with, with Connor and uh, I, I'm trying to keep my cool. I'm trying to be better about uh, having my AP bass in moments. So <laughs> I, uh, I thought, okay, that sucks. But what really sucks is I still have footage on that SD card, which is also still in 27 feet of water. If I'm gonna lose my camera, so be it. But I don't wanna lose the footage that I filmed for you guys. Uh, give me the A-Rig. Oh my God. That's, there goes that camera. I should have strapped it down. That sucks though. You can see it, it's right down there. It wasn't even that bad. The, like the wind and shit. I don't know. I just heard something fall in the bag and it was halfway in the water. Oh my god. This is great. This is fing great. So, I grabbed my heaviest rod, which is my 7.5 Guggen Green. And I, I go to work on a Frankenstein lure. Check out this, you're gonna love this. Took my Alabama rig, lined it with four, count them, four half ounce tungsten weights so that thing would sink down there because it's in 27 feet of water, it's really deep. Uh, removed all the little tiny swim baits I had this on this thing, grabbed some musky troubles, which I also just so happened to have in the boat, and I turned this into an ultimate snagging rig. I sat there for about 35 minutes on panoptics trying to hook something down there. Unfortunately, you couldn't really hook the tripod. It's just one big pole. And the camera itself, there's not too many angles where you can actually get some tension on it. So I keep missing, I keep missing. I eventually hook it once, but then it comes off. And I'm like, this sucks, this really sucks. I don't wanna lose this. And all the while in the back of my head, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm taking fishing time away from Connor. We're in a turner right now, we, which we paid for. We paid for an entry fee. Like, this is not ideal. Like, I'm, I'm kind of sweating beads. Even though it is cold outside, I'm sweating beads. So I spent another, you know, 10 minutes Five minutes, I'm like, okay, dude, if I don't get this in the next five minutes, like, let's just go, okay? I'm gonna cut my losses. Somehow, I got the perfect pitch. It sinks all the way down there. I'm dragging it, I'm dragging it, and I pop it once, I'm hooked up. I've never been so happy to get snagged in my entire life. All right, here we go, got it, got it. No way, I got it. Let's go. Uh, just I would just maybe try to grab it. Oh my god! No way, dude. No way. Big smallmouth. Big smallmouth. <laughs> yes, dude. No way. You got it. You're a legend. Thank you, man. Oh, that's so. F uh, look at it, got it too. Right on the cord, on the GoPro. I think it's fine though, it still works. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's literally oozing water. Oh, I'm pissed that I just broke my camera, but I really just want the footage back. And I think those SD cards are, they're all right. Okay, let's get back to fishing, bro. 
We set out to finish the day on the small side. Uh, we went and revisited a bank that I had marked an icon at where there were some rocks, kind of a bit of a pinnacle in 32 foot. I throw my drop shot down there, wriggling a bit, and I finally get one to kind of coast towards. And I'm like, oh, well, oh, this might happen. No, I just lost him. No! No! Dude, no! No, no, no! Not fing cool! Oh. Are you joking me? All that for just to lose him. All that just to lose him. Of course, they're not gonna eat again, are they? That was like my one shot. That drag was kinda loose. Oh. We need to go. We'll make the same mistake I did last time. Oh, what do you think? Tough day, but we got a decent bag. I feel bad you didn't yeah. get a single fish. Tough one. That was tough. We uh we did not have the easiest day of fishing to say the least. Uh, I'm filming off my iPhone right now because of the obvious this thing took a swim in 27 feet of water i'm glad we got it back though i mean i'm really bummed that i just lost basically 4500 dollars on one of my favorite cameras but i am glad that we got the sd card back which no promises but should work those are fairly waterproof and shockproof let's take a look at our prisoners real quick there they are they're doing really good i think there's maybe one or two in there that we definitely should have gotten rid of um but in all we got some good fish it was really hard there at the end we saw probably more fish at the end than we did the entire day but we could not connect i had i had one literally with five minutes to go and i decided i'd just pop them off you know probably a good keeper too a good fish we could we could use to call but got a live well full of bronzies can't complain someone out there definitely caught some good four pounders no doubt but whoever did it is an absolute hero because today was tough this is like i fish all the time and uh one of the harder days despite the fact we did get a few nice smallmouth John and Connor. What's that, lunker small? Yeah. Might be the biggest one. Three, five, six. Look at uh, all uh, that. We should have been throwing crawfish. That's a whole smell. Dude, right too. no, that's uh, actually a swim bait. Oh, dude. <laughs> that. oh, I was gonna say. Dude, that's insane. We should have been throwing crawfish, I guess. That's what, that's what I was telling you, man. They, they eat crawfish in here. Damn. Wow, we lost probably about a half a pound just in the well. Wieners, it's gonna be a wrap. We weighed in uh, 16, nine something. I don't know what we're placed at right now, but we did good. I feel like we we made the right decision by sticking with the small mouth. We had to try the large mouth, but the small mouth, man, they were just. I don't know. They were just a little bit more fired up in the morning, and I thought we could come back to them and finish the job, but they were smart. I don't know what the deal was, but they, they were definitely being difficult to catch. So we're uh, gonna see what the results are, head back to camp and celebrate a very successful day. Also, a huge shout out to Connor for coming through, driving all the way through the night. Like I said, I don't think he slept last night, but it was, uh, it was all worth it. So, oh yeah, absolutely. Great day competing on one of my favorite lakes ever. So, the tournament is over. I'm now back in my barn filming this little wrap up video, you guys, filming some context for you. Like I said, it was windy out there, so I wanted to take a moment to do some narration and share with you guys how we made it happen today. And it just so happens that we got first place. Pretty insane stuff. I didn't obviously film the way in, it wasn't much of a way in, but uh, I'll try to post the results here if they do post them online. Huge shout out to Connor for also coming with and, uh, and being my partner, helping me out in this, for this video and this derby. And uh, huge shout out to the folks over at, I believe it's Bangor Bass Club. Um, I did take my earnings and I donated them back to the charity that this tournament was for, which was MS. Before you guys go ballistic in the comments, 
I do this for fun. I'm not trying to take anyone's money. I do it so I can film for you guys and hopefully teach you how to fish a derby yourself. They're fun. It's an awesome way to add a little bit of competitive spice to fishing. Imagine if all you did for football was throw on a ball. That's no fun. What you want to do is you want to compete up against other people. And that's why I think tournament fishing is a good time. If it's done in a healthy manner and you don't cheat and you just kind of go about it in a, in a you know, a fun way. It, it's, there's money on the line, but it also is just fishing too. Just, just remember that. But anyway, I'm Pete's not signing out. Thank you guys so much for watching this derby video. I appreciate it. Get out there and compete yourself. Go crank on some toadies and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, folks, keep fishing. Yeah.